Don't make me kick you off the job. Thinks he can outspin me. This truck. This isn't even much of a snowstorm. It's weird, very dense snow. Tim's been out plowing now for quite a few hours. He started before me. And he's saying, you know, it doesn't look like a lot of snow. But you start pushing it up and you get to the end of a row. You're like, where did all this snow come from? So it's a super fine, kind of dense, dry snow. So we've already got a couple pieces of equipment out working. We got the sledge has been running. One of the other loaders is out running. Tim's out running. And they've been doing uh, open ups not a lot of snow for an open up but it's really slippery really slick all right let this warm up we'll head off to the site so it didn't turn out to be a very big snowstorm at all and our plan was not to call in the entire crew in fact we just needed a skeleton crew to do a small cleanup like this and Alex was specifically not on the call out list because we knew he wasn't feeling well. transmission by plowing in reverse actually the reverse gear in your transmission has the largest mechanical advantage of any gear in your tranny and we've been plowing with these back drag blades now for four or five years I think we're going on four years four trucks never had a single transmission issue yet But that doesn't mean we haven't had other issues with our trucks, but we can't say that the issues we've had with our trucks are directly related to plowing with a back plow versus plowing with a front and back plow combined together. I will tell you that you move a lot more snow, which means you're inevitably putting a lot more force and pressure on the truck. And we do tend to get the truck into some precarious situations that typically we wouldn't get into if we were plowing with just a front plow alone. Pretty slick how he can work around up like poles with that. He didn't like it at first. Tim was not a drag pro or a back blade fan until he used it once. Then he was converted. What's the plan? Go hit the other spot, I guess. You wanna go hit the next big lot? Yeah. All right. You just wanna show how fast you can do stuff with these things, you know? Like when you're backing up, instead of turning around, you can drop it and push backwards and, you know? makes such a difference. Spin around and throw it. All right, well, let's go hog some more. So he's tucking right up tight to that sidewalk right now. And this is the wind. So this is how we back drags away from the sidewalk without getting any snow up cast on. he can outspin me hmm. so on a little tiny baby storm like this we'll call in half of the guys at best
So in order to a lot like this, we like to work together as a team. Two guys working together just keeps everything going, going, going. I've noticed that if you have one guy work by himself, well, they maybe pick up their phone or the machine stops and they make a call or they get out and they do this. But when you work together, one guy keeps the other guy going. Who's in Alex's truck? It's not supposed to be Alex. I thought you were sick. He shouldn't be coming into work. We didn't call him into work. No, we didn't. Let's go find out. I'm gonna have to give him, I'm gonna have to kick him off the job again. Hey, I thought you were sicker than a pup, dude. <laughs> He's got his, he rolls his window up. <laughs> Dude, I heard you got the sweats and the fever and everything. Why are you here? You, you don't have to be here, Alex. You can go rest. I know. I wasn't able to sleep anyways, man. I was hot and I pulled the covers off and I was cold and I put them back on and I was just... I'm, I need right, one more jug, Alex. You got one. My whole underlayer is so standing there with your mouth open? <laughs> Tim is a germaphobe. Toolbox? And Alex knows it. That's why Alex rolled the window up automatically when Tim came over. <laughs> did you call him into work? Because I didn't. No, no one did. No. Uh, he wants to come play. So he wants to come and play. He can't sleep. Can't sleep, so he wants to come and play. What are we looking for back here? Some more uh, hydro... Or, uh, uh, what the hell you call it? Transmission fluid. Why? What's going on? Well, that other plow is almost dry. Which one? The uh, snow power. Yeah, he's got it. Hey, if you don't feel good enough, you just go home. I know, I know. Yeah. He's been told. He's been told plenty of times. He's won. There's no way I could have been doing that when I had it. I, uh, nope. I was I in didn't, bed. I, I didn't bed. call you in on purpose. Oh, you were upset because you weren't part of the group text message? Oh. He could have the flu though, so I'm staying back, man. I don't have the flu. I just had the Rona. Flu so Rona. you just had the Rona. Oh, I had it for sure, yeah. My daughter just had the Rona and I was living with her. Frankie just had it. Yep. Now he might have the Rona. Might have something. It's something. Yeah. Yeah, you were fine last night. Was that two nights ago? When you dropped off that multi-force? The trailer. Oh, the trailer, that's right. That's two nights ago. All right, all right, we gotta go. All right, you work. you have that out at the site? No, but when we, no, we're bringing it out. I got the trailer here, I left it here. So. Yeah, it's, it's part, it's on the trailer over in the snow dump. Yep. Don't make me kick you off the job. <laughs> Long story short, I heard uh, from Tim that Alex was sick. He had a fever, sweats, chills, couldn't smell, you know, all the typical not feeling good crap that's going around. So I didn't put him on, the, We every time we go out plowing, I don't, I have a group text message, a group chain, and, it can, and I have everybody, it goes out to everybody at once. And then I have them all confirm um, so I know exactly how many people I've got ready to come in and who's going to miss out, right? But I didn't include him in on the chain because I didn't want him coming in. Plain and simple. And I had a suspicious feeling that he was going to come in anyway. Even though he's sicker than a pup, I figured, knowing him, he'll show up. And there he is. The first time I ever met Alex, I didn't know him from Adam, and we were at, actually out at one of our mowing accounts. And uh, he's running the controls with one hand. He's got one hand up like this, and he's mowing with one hand. And then we go to do the weed whipping and blowing, and he puts the backpack blower on, and he's blowing, and he's got this one hand, and he's not moving this hand. And I'm kind of looking at him going, what the heck is going on with this guy? Why is, I mean, does he not know that we hired him for both his hands? 
but I didn't say anything. It was one of the first times I got to know him. Found out he had broke his hand on his way into work that morning. Fell getting into his truck, snapped his hand, came into work, worked all day long, went to the doctor after work, and put a cast on his hand. That was strike number one, or red flag number one. Like, what the heck is going on with this guy? Because if he had injured his hand or aggravated it more at work, we as a company could have been held responsible. So we should have known about that, and that should have been taken care of right away. Well, red flag number two comes when he breaks his arm and we put him on limited light duty and some of you guys may even seen the video where he got kicked off the job and by Blaine and Blaine doesn't kick anybody off a job I mean you can't get Blaine to raise his voice so for Blaine to kick somebody off a job means he's got to be doing something seriously wrong and Blaine said you're out what we found out he was doing is he was sticking the shovel on his cast and he using it as a lever and he was shoveling now he's supposed to be out on the job site reading plans He's supposed to be out on the job site doing anything but shoveling or doing anything that has anything to do with heavy labor in any way, shape, or form. So Blaine said, you're out. He could have aggravated that injury even more. Now, most regular companies would be looking at it going, hey, you know what? You got a red flag here. You injured yourself. You could have aggravated it there. Then a year later, you injured yourself. You're on restricted duty. You refused to listen to that. You could have injured yourself more. And now you're not even called to come in. You may have something possibly you know, really wrong with you. And here you are working and putting yourself where you could get yourself even more sick. You weren't called in. What are you doing here? And a lot of companies may take disciplinary action. So I said, so instead of writing them up or giving them disciplinary action, we actually promoted them. So we actually put him in front of all field operations. What's going on now is Blaine is moving out of running a field crew and Blaine's next job is to hire the next Blaine. So what Blaine is doing is he's looking for a new field chief to take over his spot so he can move into sales and marketing. And what Alex is going to do is he's going to oversee all of the sub chiefs below him. I mean, a guy like that, what do you do with him? At least in a small company like ours where we value people and we can see what a good man is worth, we promoted him. I don't know what you guys would do. I would love to hear what your company would do because every company, some of you guys work for big companies, some of you work for little ones. I kind of want to hear what you guys would do in a situation like that. What do, you, what do you think your company would do? I'm sure you got a story of somebody that did something. I mean, it's just crazy. Like some of the stories I hear how companies treat people is just just ridiculous. Love to hear from you guys what you do in a situation like this with Alex or what have you, what situations you guys have seen in the past. Uh, at places you work. That's all we got for you on this one. God bless you guys. Go get them. We'll catch you on another one.